Hello, this is Greg Fuji from DNA 2.0, and this very short webinar is meant to give you um, guidelines and instructions to quickly uh, go through your Gene Designer uh, file and um, get the important information out to review and either approve or ask us for modifications of a sequence that we've used our Gene GPS technology um, to design your sequence. So the, f the three bullets here that you're seeing are the three main things we'd like you to take a look at. First is, are the amino acid sequence or is the amino acid sequence that I requested intact? Have, has DNA 2.0 respected my constraints? And generally those are restriction sites. And finally, is the sequence that's in my um, online account identical to the sequence in the Gene Designer file that I'm actually reviewing? So um, with this in mind, let's go ahead and um, go to our online account as I've been indicated or I've been um, notified that within my online account sandbox I will find a gene designer file that has um, the optimized sequence. So there it is and I'm going to download that to my, soft, my um, desktop and now I'm going to open that file and if I remember the first step was let me go and get the amino acid sequence out and compare that to what I expect my amino acid sequence to be. There's two very simple ways to get the amino acid sequence. And what I can see from the Gene Designer file very quickly, um, and there is a very detailed webinar on the entire software. And again, this is just to get you the details you need to get through a sequence approval. Um, and so what I can see from my Gene Designer file is the construct is made up of three elements. Um, and the middle one called Open Reading Frame, or ORF, is the coding sequence. Um, and by double clicking on that icon, it brings up the amino acid sequence that is um, comprised of the codons. So you can copy it straight out of here or if you went to reports, back translation summary report, and if you use the last used back translating construct and just ask for the amino acid. And there it is. Now obviously you can copy and paste this into TextPad or WordPad or Notepad and then do an alignment with your um, amino acids. Now I'm assuming that that's checked out and the next step was to um, check the constraints. And generally, that's restriction sites. And so if you go to the sequence view, you can go ahead and, and take a look at the DNA sequence that's being proposed. And the first thing is go to the Find button, the binoculars, and say restriction sites. Now, I know that I'm, I care about XHO1 and NDE1. And what I want to find out is where they are and if they're unique. Um, I expect these to be on the flanks of the insert. So the first site they found is NDE1. There's one position found and it's at position one. And if I highlight that, I can see here it's in pink. And again, it's unique. So that's very important and, and that's good. Finally, um, XHO1 is at the three prime end where I want it and it's unique also. If there were other restriction sites that I cared about, let's say um, EcoR1, and how about the SAL one? I could add those to my query, click find, and the software is telling me that these two sites are not found, which means they don't cut my insert. And that's good because I asked DNA 2.0 to please not allow them to be present. Another way that you can get this information in more, maybe more of a uh, text format is again, go to reports, back translation summary report, and if you just click on this button here, list motifs and restriction sites, you'll get a list of um, many DNA uh, restriction enzymes and the frequency and position of the cuts. So again, if I go down to um, XHO1, there's a single cutter at 586, and ND1, there's a single cutter at position 1. And if I go to EcoR1, there are none, and the same would be true for SAL. So that's a quick way that you can check on um, the restriction sites. So assuming that, um, or now that I've found that the amino acid sequence matches and my restriction sites have been respected, the next step would be to export the entire DNA sequence that DNA 2.0 is suggesting or proposing to make and compare that to um, the sequence that's in my account. So I would recommend going to reports, back translation summary report again, and um, there are a lot of useful things that you can get a report on. And so you can click as many of these as you'd like. But the most important for this element would be the whole construct. 
And from here, you have a FASTA format of the entire construct, again, from my NDE down to my ZO. I can copy and paste that out and save it to my favorite uh, program again. And if I go to my online account, and I go to my account, my orders, and here's my order, 48470, that's in pending approval. If I click on my approval form, here are all the things that I need to approve, and, and I read carefully. Um, but one nice feature is that there's a button to export the sequence or sequences as a FASTA file. So again, here, here is my sequence, and I could certainly um, then use this to copy and paste and then do an alignment. Assuming everything checks out just perfectly, you want to go ahead and click these two buttons, and then click the I agree button. And, you, and what that does is notify DNA 2.0 that you've approved, reviewed and approved the sequences, and um, it's good for production. So if there were any um, things that you wanted to change, obviously that would be the time to alert us and say, you know, I found a problem or I found an error or I've changed my mind and I'd like to do something different. Um, we'll obviously make the changes for you, upload a new file to your software or to your sandbox, and then we'll go through the process again. So hopefully this was a very informative and quick way to get to the details um, that are necessary for reviewing a sequence that's gone through a gene GPS optimization.